I've been reading the book of Psalms these past several weeks. And Psalms is a, ve a very interesting book. Now, it is the only book of the Old Testament that was written over the course of 1,000 years. 1,000 years of Israel's history. It contains a reservoir of wisdom and experience that are reflected through the prayers and the praise of the children of Israel. So Psalms contains many wisdom that can help us navigate through our life. In fact, as you read Psalms, you find that Psalms is a very honest book, in the, in, uh, honest book about life. You see, whenever we laugh or cry, we would like to go to the book of Psalms. Now, why is that so? Because it somehow can say what we feel on the inside, especially when we cannot find words to express ourselves. And very often, when I go through difficult seasons of my life, I will go to Psalms for guidance. And recently, I've been gleaning from Psalms 13. So this morning, I will share with you from Psalm 13. Now, this is a David's psalm, written when David was going through extreme sorrow and pain. So let's begin by looking at verse 1 and verse 2. It says here in Psalm 13, verse 1, How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow, in my heart daily. How long will my enemy be exalted over me? Notice, the psalm begins with a series of questions. And there are questions which have no answers. And David was crying out to God, where are you, O God, when my life was falling apart? Have you abandoned me? You know what? David was being very honest over here. You see, we... We Christians, we can come to church, we love God, we love people, but if we are honest like the psalmist, we all do feel this way at some point in, la in life, when we feel that, where are you, O oh God? Have you abandoned me? You know what? Psalm 13 is the reality of life and ministry. In other words, all of us will experience Psalm 13. So this morning, won't you turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor that pastor is talking about you. <laughs> Remember what Jesus told us in John chapter 16, verse 33? He said, in the world, you will have tribulation. So in this world, we will have tribulation. But Jesus said, be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. In other words, yes, we will go through difficult times, but if we walk with Jesus, we too can overcome this wilderness of life. In fact, even great men and women of God are not exempted from this. Charles Spurgeon was probably the greatest preacher of the 19th century. In fact, many preachers today are gleaning from his messages. Charles Spurgeon was known as the Prince of Preachers. But one time, standing before the 5,000 members church in London, he announced to the entire congregation, he said this, I am the subject of depressions of spirit, so fearful that I hope none of you ever gets to such extremes of wretchedness as I go to. You know what? Spurgeon went through very depressing times. Such a great preacher, but yet in despair, in wretchedness, in extreme wretchedness of seasons. Because this is the reality of life. And here in Psalm 13, we see David, a man after God's own heart, the Bible says, that he was a man anointed, of the Holy Spirit, a servant of God, a prophet in his own right. But yet, David was still in trials and tribulations. So, in his despair, David asked some very honest questions. He said this, how long, how long, oh God? 
Now it feels like this trouble and sorrow is never going to end. So he cried out, how long, how long will I sing this song? You too, right? Oh, that is uh, the other generation. No, we are the new generation. <laughs> how long, he cried out. You know what, time flies during happy moments. But hours crawl slowly when life is hard. Trouble becomes unbearable when you cannot see the end in sight. And to make things worse, you know what? David doesn't even know why these terrible things are happening. You see, in Psalm 13, there is no confession of sin, no indication of what was the problem that was hindering God's pr presence and God's blessing. So you see, this Psalm was unlike Psalm 51, when David committed adultery with Bathsheba, and he cried out, do not cast me away from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit away from me. He knew exactly what was wrong, but not in Psalm 13. It was unlike Psalm chapter 3, when David fled his own son, Absalom, who wanted to kill him. And David exclaimed to the Lord and said, Lord, how have they increased who trouble me? Many are they who rise up against me. You see, but in Psalm 13, there was no reasons given. Why are these troubles surrounding his life? You see, there were reasons, there were no reasons why he was in this trouble. And that is a very troubling thing. Because when you don't know why, when you don't know why terrible things happen, we start doubting and questioning. And very often, our thoughts become negative and condemning. In fact, we start condemning ourselves. So David said, how long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? So he's saying, God, you must have forgotten me. Something is wrong with me. If not, why would this thing happen? How long will you hide your face from me? Where are you, O God, David is saying. Don't you love me anymore? He said, how long shall I take counsel in my soul? Having sorrow in my heart daily. Notice, David starts looking inward, drowning in his sorrow and anguish. His thoughts became futile and his heart was darkened. So what should we do when we don't know why? things happen. Why this unending crisis and pain? What should we do? Well, we need to go to Deuteronomy 29, 29. Oh, some of us laugh because why? Many Christians often refer to this verse when they cannot answer tough apolog apologetics question. But do you know that there is an important truth contained in Deuteronomy 29.29. 29. So let, let's look at this verse. It says, The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but those things which are, he, are revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. Notice the Bible tells us there are secret things. Shall we all say together, secret things? But then, there are revealed things. Shall we all say together, revealed things? So there are secret things, and there are revealed things. Now, the word secret, in some translation, is the word hidden. That means there are things in life that are hidden. The Bible tells us that there are mysteries of God that are hidden from us. There are things that are visible revealed things, but there are things that are invisible. Apostle Paul said that we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. That is why in 1 Corinthians 13, Paul said, for we know in part and we prophesy in part. In other words, church, we do not know everything. There are secret things and there are Revealed things. Dr. Bernard shared with us that we live life on levels 
and we arrive in stages. In other words, we don't experience or see life from the beginning to the end. You see, what we do experience is the present now. And if our memory does not fail us, we still can remember some of our past. But then when it comes to our future, you know what? It is mystery, hidden. We do not know everything. We are unlike God because God is omniscient. He knows all things. He sees life from the beginning to the end. In fact, the Bible says that He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. So He is different from us. But for us, there are things that are secret, but then there are things that are revealed. For, take for example, last year, when I went to the cinema and I watched Avengers Infinity War. After I finished the Infinity War, I walk away from the cinema shock, shock, perplexed, confused. I was a little depressed, extremes of wretchedness. <laughs> Why? Because the show ended with half the world's population destroyed. The superheroes were gone. How could they destroy Spider-Man? <laughs> you know what? I walk away that night on my bed. My thoughts became futile and my heart was darkened <laughs> by Thanos. <laughs> In fact, for the next one year, I was wondering, perplexed. I couldn't figure out how could this be? How could the superheroes are gone? What, what next? What, what next about life? How can life go on without all this superhero? Until this year, when I saw Avengers Endgame. Woo! Aha! Then I understood the end from the beginning, the beginning to the end. You know what, church? Life is like that. Because sitting right here, many of us are experiencing infinity war. The war that's going on around your life, your family, your marriage is infinity. It doesn't end. The crisis seems, how long, oh God, is this going to happen? How long will this crisis last? And you're in this infinity war, but I want to encourage you, if only you can keep walking, keep believing, keep praying, the end game will come. So, what do we do when we are overwhelmed by all these don't know why questions? Friends, what you need to do is to hold on to things revealed. You see, the secret things of the Lord belongs to the Lord, but the revealed things belongs to us and to our children forever. Turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor, the things revealed belongs to you. Throughout human history, God has at various times and various ways revealed Himself to us so that people may know Him. In fact, through the 66 books of the Bible, God revealed who He is. God revealed His relationship with us. As such, we can hold on to these things revealed. So what are the things that are revealed? Take for example, in Isaiah 49, Verse 15, it says, Can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of a womb? Surely they may forget, yet I will not forget you. See, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. You know what? The Bible tells us things that are revealed that God will not forget me. God will not forget you. Your name is inscribed on the palms of His hands. 
Hold on to things that are revealed. What are, reve what are revealed things? Take for example, 1 Corinthians 10 to 13. It says, No temptation has overtaken you yet, as that such is common to men. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. In other words, in life, there's no, no temptation will overcome us because God is faithful. I like the Chinese translation. It says, 在受试探的时候, The word 重要 means in the conclusion of the matter. That means in life, as you go through your infinity war, when you come to the conclusion, the end game, God will always make a way of escape for you. Because God is faithful. Shall we all say together, God is faithful. What are the things that are revealed to us, my friends? Romans 8.28 tells us, For we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. God is a good God. Shall we give the Lord a big hand clap, shall we? <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's come back to Psalm 13. So, hold on to things that are revealed. So how did David respond? Look at verse 3. He said, Consider and hear me, O Lord my God, and lighten my eyes. So he said, God, open my eyes to the things that are revealed. Show me. Show me who you are. Show me. And lighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death, lest my enemies say I have prevailed against him, lest those who trouble me rejoice when I am moved. Notice how David cried out to God. He said, Consider me. Now, the word consider can be translated as look. So it is like a, a, a boy crying out to his daddy and saying, Father, dad, dad, look, look here. So David is crying out to God. He's saying, look here, Father, look here. Hear me, answer me, give me light, show me your face, enlighten my eyes. You know what, in crisis, David, the first thing that he did was that he turned to God and called on Him. Even when he didn't have all the answers, he turned to the Lord and said, Look here, O God, hear my prayer, answer me. You see, very often, when our hearts are overwhelmed and we feel that God is far away, the temptation is that we want to turn away from God and take things into our own hands. Now, this was the lesson that we learned from Israel in the Old Testament. Because in Jeremiah 2, look at verse 13, God told Israel, He said, For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewn themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. What happened? You see, when Israel go through difficult times, instead of going to the fountain of life, God Himself, they turn away from Him and make themselves cisterns. But they are broken cisterns. They took things into their own hands. You know what, church? When our hearts are confused, instead of wallowing in those unanswerable questions, let us learn to be like David. Turn to the one. Turn to the fountain of living waters. Because if you seek Him, you will find Him. Because the Bible says, draw near to God and He will draw near to you. These are things revealed. Hold on to them. Amen? I have finished my introduction. In verse 5 and verse 6, it's the key, it's the turning point for our life. You see, in verse 5, Psalms 13 verse 5, Psalms 13 has, has six verses. In verse 5, David continued, he said this, 
but I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. So what, what did David hold on to? He held on to the unfailing love. Everybody say unfailing love. unfailing love. Now the phrase unfailing love in Hebrew is the word hesed. Like hate set, like something like that. Hesed, okay. Hesed. Everybody say hesed. Now the word hesed refers to the steadfast, unfailing covenantal love and mercy of God. It is the love, it is the kind of love that when a husband at marriage take a vow to the woman and tell the wife, until death do us part. And that is the kind of commitment that God is giving to us, until death do us apart. My love for you will be unfailing. I will be steadfast. I will not break my covenant with you. In fact, Hesed is an attribute of God. Why? Because God himself is steadfast. God is unfailing love. The Bible says God is love. He is Hesed. He is steadfast. Deuteronomy Chapter 7, verse 9 says, Therefore, know that the Lord your God, He is God, the faithful God, who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love Him and keep His commandments. So, Hesed is His attributes. It is who He is. But there is another thing about Hesed. is that it is not just an abstract concept or a state of being. Headset, when you study the Bible, it is an act of kindness. In other words, it is an action concept. It is an action. Everybody shout, action. action. Why is this so important? Because David understood, and David is crying out to God and say, Oh God, I trust in your headset, your unfailing love, because you will act Yes, you will do, take action. You will do mighty works. You still work miracles. Because God is, has said, today, the same yesterday, today and forever, He will not break His covenant. He will do His miracles in your life. It is who He is. An action God. Amen. So David continued. So he said, I, I put my trust in your headset, your unfailing love. And then in verse 6, David continued. He said this, I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. So David started singing. He, sing, he sang a song of thanksgiving to the Lord. Now thanksgiving it's so crucial. In Latin, it is called Deo Gratias. Deo Gratias means thanks be to God. In fact, singing the song of thanksgiving is one of the most important practices. Means in our, a, a, it is a customary practice and conduct of our Christian life. Next to Amen. In prayers, right? Christian like to say amen, 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 amen. <laughs> Next to amen in prayers, hallelujah in praise. You know what? When I accepted Christ, I'm 16 years old, I go back to, to school, and then everything my friend talks about, you know, he say, well, today is a great day, hallelujah. <laughs> today exam is easy, hallelujah. I will go hallelujah. They thought I was crazy, everything, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. They asked me, what, what happened to you? I said, I became a Christian. Hallelujah. <laughs> Why? Because I have not read the Bible yet. The only word I know about Christianity is hallelujah. <laughs> so next to amen in prayers, hallelujah in praise, you know what? The, the next phrase that we often use is thank God. Thank God is what you hear Christians say most of the time. Deo Gratias in Latin. Thank God. So when we got 
into the MRT train this morning before the door closes, we step into the door and say, thank God. <laughs> right? When you propose to your girlfriend and your girlfriend says, yes, I, 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 yes, I will marry you. And you say, thank God, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Deo gratias. When you're struggling financially, and then when you walk along the, the bus stop and you saw a $10, $10 bill on the floor, they say, thank God. <laughs> Christians, we, thank God is, is, is part of our praxis, our practice and our conduct. In fact, since ancient Israel, the people of God has this custom of giving thanks to God. Thanksgiving is deeply entrenched in their daily conversations and songs. There is even an entire song in the book of Psalm dedicated to Thanksgiving. In Psalm 136, notice in this Psalm, if you read the Bible, that the title is Thanksgiving to God for His Enduring Mercy. Now, there are 26 verses in this psalm. Look at the, the opening verses. Verse 1, it says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endures forever. Verse 2, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, to the God of gods, for His mercy endures forever. Verse 3, Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for His mercy endures forever. And he went on and on for 26 verses. Every verse speaks about giving thanks to God for his mercy. What is that word? Mercy has said. For his has said, his unfailing love. He, he will not break his covenantal love, his commitment, his faithfulness, his steadfastness. For his mercy, his has said, endures forever. So in Israel, in Israel, in their custom, this is one of the songs they sing all the time. On a daily basis, they will wake up, give thanks to the Lord for His mercy and yours forever. Give thanks to the Lord for His mercy and yours forever. Give thanks to the Lord for His mercy and yours forever. Give thanks to the Lord for His mercy and yours forever. The unchanging love, unfailing love of God. So the question is this, under what circumstances did Israel give thanks to the Lord? When will they sing? When should they sing and give thanks to God? Now you know what, usually when we sing and when we give thanks, it's when something good happened. But in our Christian praxis, there is another type of singing, another type of thanksgiving, one that goes into action in the midst of great obstacles. It is giving thanks to God in the face of adversity, in the face of tears and heartaches and troubles. Take for example, the book in the book of 2 Chronicles. Now in 2 Chronicles 20, it recorded the story of King Jehoshaphat. Look at verse 1. It says, It happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them besides the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Now notice, there are three armies, three enemies coming against Jehoshaphat. Now, why did the enemies attack Jehoshaphat? We don't know. In fact, the Bible says it happened. You know what? In life, it's like that. Sometimes you ask, why you fell sick? It happened. Why did you lose the business deal? I did everything I know, but it happened. Why, why did you fail your GP paper? I did my best, but it happened. Right, this usually the, the answer they get from your children, right? <laughs> you say, ask them, do you study hard? They say, yes. Then you say, then why the result like that? Well, it happened. <laughs> so here, it didn't give us the reason. Did 
Did Jehoshaphat offend or provoke the enemies? No. Did Jehoshaphat sin against God as a result there's a judgment upon his life? No. Then why did three enemies, three armies come and attack Judah? It happened. It just happened. You know what? In life, there are many situations like that where we cannot find answers. Questions, 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 but there's no answer, and it happened. And you know what? Here, we have at least three armies coming against Jehoshaphat, Ammon, Moab, and others. And you know what? King Jehoshaphat and the people of Judah were terrified. They were fearful. And the Lord spoke to his people. Look at verse 17. The Lord said this, you will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. Who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem? It says here, do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them, for the Lord is with you. Now, the word tomorrow, go out against them. In the Chinese Bible, it's, it's called ying di. Ying di. It's a word means you go out and meet them. In other words, you, you can translate this. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out and meet your enemies. Go out and face your enemies. How do you go out and face your enemies? How do you face your problem? How do you face your mountain? How do you face the trouble that's coming against you? Read on in verse 21. It says, And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of his holiness as they went out before the army and were saying, Praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Notice, where did they learn this song from? It is their ancient history culture. Since ancient time, it is their praxis, it is their customary practice and conduct that they will praise the Lord, give thanks to the Lord. Deo gratias, because His mercy, His hesed endures forever. And when they did that, look at verse 22, and when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord sent ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mousiah, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. Church, this morning, how do you face your enemies? How do you go out and meet your problems? How do you go out and face the challenges of life? The obstacles that seem impossible. You know what? Learn to give thanks. Sing. Deo gratias. And as you begin to give thanks and to sing, all your enemies will be defeated. Give thanks to the Lord. Everybody say, Deo gratias. One more time. Deo gratias. You see, we give thanks to God. Not because of the trials and the tribulations. Not because for the sickness and failure. No. Because God is not evil. The Bible says He puts evil in no one's way. Because the God that we serve is a good God. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. So His will for us, the Bible says, is that we should prosper in all things and be in health just as our soul prosper. So we don't give thanks. We give thanks to God not because of the trials and tribulation, not because of sickness and failure, no. Because God is a good God. But yet, when we go through troubles and trials, like Jehoshaphat, we still sing and give thanks and deo gratias. Why? Why? Because His mercy endures forever. Why? Because He will never forget us. Because He is a good God, faithful God, our names are still inscribed on the palms of His hand. 
Why did we why do we give thanks? Because God is faithful, and at the end of the day, end game, He will make a way of escape for us. Why do we give thanks? Because we believe in his headset that he is still doing miracles. He's still working all things together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. God is a good God. Amen? You see, during 2017, SOT graduation, we heard of the testimony of Eric Chua. Back in 2013, we heard that he was diagnosed with stage 2 oral cancer. Now his daughters and cell group members started praying fervently for his healing. And at that time, miraculously, after a risky surgery and treatment, Eric was totally healed and cleared of cancer. And since then, Eric has been testifying of God's goodness wherever he goes. But however, last year, 2018, August, he discovered that cancer appeared in his throat. And during treatment, the pain was excruciating, unbearable. So very often, Eric was unable to eat nor sleep. One night, Eric was suffering so much that he wanted to give up this fight. He cried to the Lord. He said, God, where are you? Where are you when I pray? Where are you? Have you forsaken me? And then suddenly, as he was praying, the Lord's prayer in Matthew chapter 3 came into his mind. He said, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. And he started reciting it and saying it out in the midst of his pain and suffering, sleeplessness, excruciating pain that he cannot bear. He said, Our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Deo gratias. Thanks be to you, O God. Your headset, your faithfulness will never end. Your unfailing love will never fail. You are still for me. You are still with me. And he start giving thanks to God. And you know what? As he was giving thanks, suddenly he fell asleep soundly that night. But this year in February, he did an operation to remove part of the throat because of the cancer and he has to remove his voice box. As a result, he could not speak. He had to communicate through writing. When I visited him at the hospital, you know what, I, I was planning to go, I was thinking to myself, how am I going to encourage him? Because he was in such pain, such predicament. So I was thinking how to encourage me, but when I stepped into the hospital, he was not lying down, he was sitting and he was writing. I asked him, what are you writing? See, I'm writing my journal, giving thanks to God. Said, so I, when I saw him, I thought he'll be frowning, and, but he was smiling, and he saw me and said, he couldn't speak, but he, I sat beside him, and he's not talking to me through writing. He said, God is good. Thank God my life is preserved. I have a second chance to live, hallelujah. He started writing, he started telling me, you know what, when I recover, I want to go mission with you. He said, when I go mission with you, I want to share my testimony. But then he said, but now I cannot speak. I, I told him, don't worry, your life is already a testimony. Just by you standing, smiling, it is a testimony. <laughs> Giving thanks to God, Deo gratias in the face of cancer. Deo gratias in the face of losing your voice. Deo gratias in the face of an operation. Deo gratias in the face of bankruptcy. Deo gratias when you are surrounded by your enemies. Deo gratias.
recently, I was praying for him on the phone. So I record a prayer, send him, and he replied me. And this is what he, he replied. First word. In, it's all in Chinese, so let me translate. He said, thank you, pastor. His first words. Gratias. Thank you, pastor. He said, I am good. I can start eating now. Only thing is I cannot speak, but I am good. Some of us, we can speak, but we are no good. No, no. <laughs> he said, I, I cannot speak, but I am good. Deo gratias. He said, but I believe God, that God will give me a new voice. Then he went on, he said, praise and thanks to God. Deo gratias. The medical report shows no remain of cancer cells. And then he end off with a smiley face, thumbs up. Why? Because how do you face your enemies? Set yourself to sing. Deo gratias. But you say, but pastor, there's no reason. I don't even know what the problem is. Well, that is, not the, that is no problem because we praise Him, we worship Him, we give thanks to Him. For what? For His mercy has set and yours forever. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You see, remember Jesus. When Jesus was at the Last Supper, just before his passion, just before he will suffer, crucify, and die, he stood before the 12 disciples at the table. In Luke 22, verse 19, the Bible says he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. What is Jesus trying to say? You see, there, when Jesus broke bread, that is not just the bread. He knew exactly what is going to happen. He was talking about himself. Then in a moment's time, he will be betrayed by his closest friend. In a moment's time, he's going to go through the greatest suffering, crucifixion. He's going to die the most cruel death. But in the midst of it, how did he face his passion? He began by giving thanks. Deo gratias. He knew that there will be a moment when he will be hung on the cross. And there on the cross, he will cry out, Eli, Eli, Laba Sabachthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Do you know this is exactly what Psalm 13, David was crying. David was saying, how long? How long will you forget me and hide your face from me? And Jesus experienced the pain, the suffering, the crucifixion. But in the face of all these terrible things, and he couldn't understand why. He said, God, why? Why? How long? But in the face of it, Jesus, give thanks. Deo gratias. Because he trusts. He trusts in the Father's unfailing love. Because of his headset, he will not leave my soul in Hades. But on the third day, he will resurrect me and bring me back to life. You know what, friends? Your thanksgiving precedes resurrection. Many of us, you want to experience the resurrection power of Jesus. Won't you start giving thanks today? Because thanksgiving precedes resurrection power. In closing, let me share with you a story from Luke chapter 17. In Luke 17, there is a story of 10 lepers who came to Jesus seeking for healing. It says, then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, must have mercy on us. Notice, Jesus met these ten lepers and Jesus healed them all. Ten men were healed. But the Bible went on to say there was only one, 
Only one. It says, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. Notice, the other night, the king stood out far off. Did they receive their healing? Yes. But after they were healed, they still remain distant from Jesus. However, only one returned to give thanks. Deo gratias. And that one, he not only received healing, but he also received Jesus, the healer. What is the difference? How, what's the key? From just receiving a one-time healing to have the healer with you on a daily basis, there is a transition. The transition is called Deo Gratias. If you can give thanks, you not only experience the miracle, you have the miracle worker walking with you every single day. Shall we all say together, Deo Gratias? One more time. That is why Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. Shall we read this verse together? 5 verse 18 together now. It says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. See the others. Under what circumstances do we give thanks? In everything. No matter what circumstances you are in, whether good, bad, or ugly, in everything, give thanks. Deo gratias. Shall we give the Lord a big hand clap? Let's have the musician to come. This morning, I want no one to be walking because at this juncture, we want to take up the offering and the tithes for today. But this morning, I intentionally put the offering to this segment because I want us to take action. Because thanksgiving is not a concept in our mind. It is an action, a praxis, a practice. When you are facing all your enemies and challenge, you must practice thanksgiving. But you say, but pastor, I have no reason to give thanks. Well, we thank him, not because of the situation. We thank him because his mercy his headset endures forever. Thanksgiving precedes miracle. This morning, I want to believe God that our offering, our Thanksgiving offering, will bring about a miracle in our life this morning. Something will change. You see, the giving of tithe and offering is embedded in this concept of Thanksgiving. Each month, we set aside 10%, a tithe of all our income and our allowances to give to the Lord. Why? Because we want to say thank you. You see, every month, I go through, every month, every day, is, it's kind of like ministry, you know, doing different stuff, busy. But there come one day each month. One day each month that is very special for me. Why? Because that one day, I'll take up my laptop, I'll go through my finances. I'll look at all my income. I'll sit in front of the computer, open my bank account, and go through all my accounts. I'll sit there for about 10, 15 minutes, sometimes half an hour. Sometimes when the finances is very tight, I got to sit through an hour, not to calculate, but to pray. But there will be a moment each day, each month when I calculate and then I set aside 10% and say, God, Deo gratias. Thank you for bringing me through another month. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This morning, won't you come before the Lord and bring before the Lord your thanksgiving, your tithe, your offerings. Like what Proverbs 3 Verse 9 says, Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of your, all your increase, so your barns will be filled with plenty 
and your vats will overflow with new wine. This morning, let our tithes and offering be a thanksgiving to the Lord. On your seat, there's an envelope. Like, look, like, look like this. If you, have, if you do not have one, just raise your hands. Ask us to pass it out to you. Let's all give something this morning. But you say, but pastor, I'm like Joseph, like David. I'm in a very terrible situation. This morning, won't you take action? Trust the Lord. Believe God. His mercy endures forever. And let's believe God that our enemies will be defeated. The doors will be open. The chains will be loose. Amen? Let's prepare our giving right now, shall we? Now we can give through digital giving, scan the QR code, or those want to give through check, make it payable to City Harvest Church. And those watching online, participate in this giving together with us. And let's believe God for a breakthrough for our lives. Amen? And it's the end of the month. Some of us may want to give your tithe. You can do so in this giving. You can fill out the information and then uh, the church will issue you an official receipt. Now, once you're ready, I want us this morning, you know, sometimes we, we rush through our offering, but this morning I want you to pray. I want you to pray and lift up your offering to the Lord. So, shall we lift our hands, lift our offering to the Lord? And let's spend a moment. I want you to pray in the Spirit. And let's just shower our giving with our prayers this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, we come to you this morning. Like the night at the Last Supper. You broke bread and you gave thanks. Lord, this morning, in the face of all our circumstances, we come before you with our thanksgiving. Thank you, Deo gratias. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. This morning, we ask that you receive our offering and let heaven be open. Let God arise and let all our enemies be scattered. Let there be a breakthrough in our lives as we offer our thanksgiving offering to you. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Ashes, you may serve the people right now. But please do not leave because we're going to do a second thing together. Just allow the bucket to pass and, and then give your offering. Now, you ask me, Pastor, why did you share this sermon? I share this sermon because the past month or so has been very difficult for myself personally and for different ones. And I, we went, I went through a very tough season of my, of my life. Now, often when I go through seasons, some people will consult friends and stuff like that. But for me, usually the first thing I do is I always go back to the scriptures to see what does the Bible say. And as I was searching the scriptures, I came across Psalms 13. That when you go through, when you go through life, there are so many unanswered questions. What do you do? David says, sing. I will sing. Everybody say, I will sing. What do you do? One more time. So when I say, what do you do? You, you reply, I will sing, okay? So what do you do? I sing. What do you do? I sing. sing. You see, what, is the dif what difference can it make? Let me tell you, this is the Christian, this is our Christian praxis for the last 2,000 years, but not just the 2,000 years, but since ancient Israel. Deo gratias. I will sing in the midst of my enemies. I will sing when I walk through the fire. I will sing when I go through the waters. I will sing. And this morning, in a moment's time, as we sing, I want you to believe God. All our enemies will be scattered.
the mountains shall be moved. The miracles will come. The healing will come. But you see, but pastor, what is the confidence that I can have? You can have. The confidence that we can have is that His headset endures forever because He's unchanging. His unfailing love endures forever. His mercy endures forever. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. God will take action. The miracles will come. Amen. Why not let's give the Lord a big hand clap, shall we? Shall we all stand to our feet right now? So church, one more time. When you go through a difficult time, what should you do? What do you do? Over here, what do you do? And this morning, why not let's lift our voice to the Lord and let the Lord know that we are not just hearers of the word, we are doers of the word. We will sing to the Lord and give thanks to Him. Would you just leave your hands and talk to the Lord for a moment? Like what David says, turn to Him. Tell the Lord, look here, Father, look here this morning in Suntech City. Look here in City Harvest Church. Your people, we are here. We are here and we will sing. We will give thanks. Deo gratias. We will pray. We call you this morning. even right now something is breaking in an atmosphere atmosphere something is breaking the healing will come this morning there is power to heal cancer because his has set endures forever this morning heart disease will be healed something will happen your, even your physical body you can feel the power of God coming over you wave upon wave of healing power and anointing breaking the yoke of the enemy over your body even right now some of us even as we sing something is breaking in your mind in your heart there's a heaviness but a heaviness God is turning every heaviness into a into joy into dancing feet power of God is being released here in this place Something will change in your family even as you sing. God will set ambushes over the enemies, the assignment of the devil that's against your life, against your family. In the name of Jesus, the enemies will be defeated. 
presence of the Lord is here. don't just sing because we do it now but we join the witnesses from ancient past for thousands of years and as they sing miracles happen God shows up and we're going to live this hallelujah song one more time and as you do so as you do so, let the miracle of God, let the glory of God be manifested in your life, in your family, in your business, in our church. Father, we are not doing this because it's a good idea. We're doing this because we join the saints of ancient past. For the last thousands of years, we are lifting our hallelujah to you. We are lifting our thanksgiving to you because your mercy endures forever. From thousands of generations, your mercy endures forever. Your goodness endures forever. Your unfailing love endures forever. Hallelujah. This morning, as your people, we stand in awe of your presence. As we think about David, Jehoshaphat, Apostle Paul, Jesus, standing on this planet Earth from generation to generation to generation to generation to, generation to now lifting the hallelujah song to you giving thanks to the god of gods the lord of lords the king of kings because you are the same yesterday today and forever and the miracles you have done in ancient past lord you're doing it today the miracle will come the healing will come the deliverance will come. Let God arise 
and let all your enemies be scattered, oh God. So we give you praise and give you, we give you all our worship this morning. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. And all God's people shout, Amen. City Harvest, won't you clap your hands one last time? Won't you give God a shout of victory this morning? Hallelujah. Wow. Wow. So when you are faced with enemies, what do you do? When you are in trouble, what do you do? Shall we all say together one last time the Latin phrase? One, two, three. Let this be our praxis. It means our customary, customary practice and conduct. If there's one thing that the people will think about City Harvest, they'll say the City Harvest people are people that give thanks to the Lord. No matter what, we give thanks to the God Most High.